and welcome. So today we are going to be taking all of the major components that we put together for our giant web shooting spider, although I was kind of web shooting the last time, and we're going to put it together and we're going to see if this thing even works, right? And I do have a couple victims in mind to try this out on. That is not me this time, not me. I had enough. So uh, we were kind of going back and forth before the stream started. We got the, the, the OG crew here, uh, Dave. Dave Beck, uh, Dave Wells, we got the double Daves, uh, we have Bill Frazier, Carl James, and our two Brazilian friends I saw, Silvio and Abenau are also here, então, boa noite, vamos começar, all right, so we are going to get started. So there were a couple mishaps in that uh, we had a lot of rain. Uh, so I wasn't able to get all of our spider legs painted uh, because they kept getting rained on and that, you know, kind of sucked. So the objective for today is to try and get as many of the components together, see if everything fits, set it up, and then try it. So uh, this is where we're going to try it out. Uh, I'm going to, oh, we saw a victim, a potential tale of a victim. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, pretend we're going to go take a walk. We'll set up the spider on the right there, see if it motion detects us. And then, dum, 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 we'll see if uh, our victims fall prey to the spider. So I do have my garage door open, not the outside one, but the inside one. So you may hear additional, like, house noise and dog noise, which you guys hear all the time, but even louder this time. Uh, oh, and Larry is here too. Awesome. Uh, you all had some awesome ideas. Top Cat uh, One is here and I've been incorporating some of them. And remember, this is version one. Uh, we're going to have fun with it this Halloween and then it will make a comeback and uh, make, you know, a couple debuts here and there, just like our Robo Cart, which didn't make a comeback for this project because the hustle was on for this, for Halloween. Uh, but that's the first project that's gonna make a comeback with a lot of your guys' suggestions. And then the spider will kind of peek its head, you know, once in a while as the year winds on. So we'll have a fully functional version two for next year. And on top of that, we'll do another Halloween project. I love Halloween, so we gotta do Halloween projects. So I was in the middle of soldering up some LEDs for our LED eyes. And let me show you guys what I've been 
working on. And perhaps some light, shed some light on the subject. There we go. Uh, so I have some eyeballs right here painted up and I'll hold one uh, closer to you guys. You can see that, uh, you know, I kind of created some black, um, some kind of black striations. So that way, let's see if it might focus a little bit better that way. Hello. Oh, it likes my hand, but doesn't like my hand down here. Well, anyways, there we go. Uh, so you can see that I added enough black where we're definitely going to see the red LED shining through, but uh, hopefully it'll disguise the fact that they're big, bright LEDs. Now, Larry did mention uh, about concealing them somehow, diffusing them, you know, and I thought about maybe using some kind of white tissue or white dish uh, protectors, you know, for when you're moving and... I don't know. I don't know if I want like white back there. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give it a go like this. And then I think it was Larry too that had the idea for here. Heat it up and then push it out. So that way it actually creates a pupil. So it's not flat like this. Because yeah, this kind of looks like Rachel went to the dollar store and like picked up some cheap stuff. Totally. I admit it. I admit it, you know. So I tried it with a couple of them. And I think the very fact that they are dollar store items, like the whole thing melts. I had a trouble concentrating the heat just on this part right here so I can pull it out, you know, with a screwdriver, but, you know, stick it in there and then push this part out. So that didn't work out real well. I tried until I had two left and I was like, mm, I ain't spending an extra dollar. I am not going to the dollar store, Larry. <laughs> So I decided for these to keep as is. And of course, as soon as I decided that Christmas is here, all of the decorations are out in the stores and they have the Christmas balls, which are plastic and perfectly round. But I had already painted these. So I'm going to use these just because out of spite. Yeah, this is a, a, a spite eyeball use. <laughs> oh, and Jell is here. Uh, and uh, Cac uh, Cactus Man is here. And uh, he's like, where am I and why? Oh, listen, I don't know. The why, I can't tell you. The where you are is, is here. And we're going to wrap up our giant web shooting spider, or at least the major components. There's going to be a couple little things that I'm going to finish up in the upcoming days leading up to Halloween. Uh, so, yes, the whys, I can't answer that for you guys, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Some people are like, yeah, I got better things to do than, you know, watch Rachel get slimed like on Nickelodeon style. So anyways, I wanted to wire up some LEDs for our Arduino. And so this is kind of like what I have so far. And you can see, I thought that each eye, why is this not focusing? It is like angry. I am just looking up at the camera here to see what is going on. Oh, there we go. There we go. It was on manual focus. So I had to try and figure out where the focus was. So I must have like touched something. So I figured each eye will have two LEDs, like these little guys right here. And there'll be two LEDs and you know, they flicker. So it'll look really nice. Now for these big eyes, I thought they'll have three LEDs and one LED will be constant. All these will be constant, except for the two big eyes, they'll have one LED constant and then two that light up when the Arduino senses or our motion detector senses that there's somebody there. So not only will they get slimed, they're gonna see that the eyes kind of light up. It's like that first initial cue, like run, but it'll be too late for them. So uh, these are the ones that are going to be wired all together. Uh, so what I did was combine the positives and the negatives into just one lead. And then once we have all of these wired up, all these will be connected into one positive, one negative, either going to a battery or some kind of plug-in device. Uh, and these can take anywhere from six to 12 volts. Uh, so, you know, we got that. I don't have one for, I don't have enough for every eye, but we have enough to kind of give us an idea. And, uh, ooh, we got a new follower, Cactus Man. Welcome, Cactus Man. So, uh, thanks for joining. So now I, I, I uh, figured that you know why you're here. Maybe you have figured out your why. Uh, and 
Oh, oh, and Ron is saying, Yahoo, I've been waiting for this one. Yes, I know. This is like the, the grand finale, which is not really, it's like the tribute to the finale because the real finale, um, I'll post videos and things of when it's done after Halloween and how it did for you guys. So what I was in the middle of doing is where be my uh, wiring up single LEDs. Now the LEDs that go into your Arduino, you don't want to double them up the way I did. Uh, the Arduino, each pin tolerates about 20 milliamps and that's kind of what these tend to put out. So anytime you need, you're gonna run out of pins, your best bet is to use an LED strip. Uh, but for us, because we are only gonna be wiring up four LEDs, we have our sensor and our servo, we got more than enough pins, so we'll be okay. And so Silvio from Brazil is asking if these LEDs are um, multicolor or if they're single color. So they are single color, but they flicker. Uh, so I will explain that to the Brazilian uh, crowd. Então, Silvio, esses uh, LED não é uh, muitas cores. Esse é vermelho, só que ele pisca. E ele pisca sozinho. Então, a gente não tem que fazer nenhum, nenhum código, nada disso. Então, todos os LED que eu estou usando aqui é vermelho e todos eles piscam. Então, vai ser bem, you know, que nem uma aranha. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. And, uh, oh, we are still up. I'm like watching you stream. Sometimes uh, you've been finicky. So you guys will also see that I have a whole bunch of like kaleidoscope of colors going on. That's because I'm trying to get rid of these weird random colors. So I figure what better project to do that than on than a Halloween project. So I got one wired up there. I was in the middle of wiring up another. So I figure if we at least have two LEDs, we can see if they actually work. And then I can wire up the others accordingly. So the way I was doing this, I'll move this out of the way and this into the way. And I have our resistor. It comes with the kit, this resistor. And this is a 470 uh, ohm resistor. And with our LEDs, um, most of you already know from me explaining, I'm holding it over the cable so you can see one leg is long and one leg is short. The long leg is your positive. Now it doesn't matter which you know, leg you put your resistor on. Uh, this time I'm gonna happen to put it on the positive, but for, before that, I'm put my eyeballs on. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around our positive. And now that I'm doing resistor on the positive, I'm just gonna make sure to do that for every single leg uh, on our resistor. So that way some are not negative and some are positive because sometimes because I'm using this multicolor insanity, uh, I can always see which one has the resistor and then uh, I'll know that that's the positive one, you know, for this project. So let me uh, pop, pop my fan on here and Get this nice and warm. So tonight's stream is like a variety stream. We're gonna work on, you know, little bits and pieces of the spider as it comes together. And let's grab a little heat shrink tubing action here. And I'm just gonna measure This will fit over the resistor. And to make it even easier to know where my resistor is, I'm going to cut this right at the resistor so the resistor can be like peekaboo. And just slipping that on. I chose a, a rather tight one, but I'm committed. I've chosen it. Now it'll go. The other thing too, sometimes I'm way too fast putting these on. And then the connection is still a little warm and your heat shrink starts to shrink, you know, <laughs> the way it's supposed to. And then you can't get it on. Oh, Richard Ball reminded me to wet the sponge. I did not wet the sponge. It's looking pretty like dry, right? Even you guys can see that. 
It's not like I can even fake that and be like, oh no, don't worry guys, it's totally wet. It is not, it is totally dry. Um, I've been using this little guy right here, one of my favorite guys to use. So we have that done. And I think I will choose blue for our uh, positive here. And I've actually been using blue for the positive and the negative. And I'm just gonna use this as a kind of a guide. Took you guys on a trip there for a second. It's like, whoa, calm down. All right, let's strip the ends. So today we're gonna see just a little teaser of every little, you know, part of the spider coming together. So we won't do every single one. We won't sit here and do like a ton of uh, LEDs. We'll just do this one as an example since I've already done one and we'll see how they look and then I'll replicate it on the other eye. And I don't know why I was doing this for. <laughs> All right, so let's continue with, you know, maybe I'll get a two for one. I'll wrap this guy and I'll do another one. And we'll double solder, two for one soldering. And I'm just kind of cutting this off screen here for a sec. Get you out of the way. And let's snip you, strip you. So Silvio has a question. Silvio está perguntando qual é a tensão de funcionamento dos LEDs. Uh, então, eu acho que eu entendo o que você está falando, mas eu vou explicar do jeito que eu, <risos> que eu acho. Então, os LED, você pode pôr 6 a 12 volts no LED. Se você pôr mais, ele queima. E eu tenho um resistor aqui de 470 ohms. All right, gotta go back and forth uh, for, for all you guys. And I think these LEDs are half watts. I always try and buy half watts versus the quarter watts. Uh, the quarter watts are more than fine for the types of projects that we do. Uh, but, you know, that are safe than sorry, especially when you got me behind the wheel. Uh, it's always, whoops. We've had quite a few of those moments, but that's what makes it fun. Ooh, so Joe has a good um, tip. You can use the alligator clip as a heat sink so you don't damage the LED or melt the LED. Our little LED casing. All right, let's get some. That is a good tip. Let's get this uh, heat shrink tubing, which I know I'll, I always forget. But I'm getting better, guys. I'm getting better. And let me grab another one. And I always keep the little remnants always keep the remnants they're always good for something and so i'm putting all the heat shrink tubing on at once so we can heat shrink all at the same time why aren't you going in oh it's getting caught on a barb i got me a barb there we go the bar. So with this resistor kind of peekabooing right here, it kind of is another cue because I'm using all these ridiculous uh, colored wires. But because these are going in the Arduino, uh, we're actually going to transition to a DuPont connector. So those will be correctly colored. Uh, so I'll know which is which, but also just kind of as uh, in case I'm looking at it topside. And this thing is just focusing on that because it's uh, 
closest to the camera. There we go. If I'm looking top side, that's another indicator that this is the positive line because they're both blue, which don't do that. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. All right, so we got a couple LEDs done up. Uh, I say, I don't know, guys, maybe you want to move to the uh, abdomen. Uh, I actually sewed up a sack, like a Santa Claus sack, but I tried to give it shape, you know, so that's like the backside of the, the butt, the butt of the spider. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I know I'm going to burn myself and I'm going to put it here. Oh, and Dave's saying, I knew Barb. I dated her in college. <laughs> Good old Barb. Hopefully she was less uh, sharp and spiky uh, than what I was dealing with. And Jell is saying, quarter watts are easier to get the shrink tube over uh, too, right? Yeah, they are. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move these LEDs kind of out of the way off screen even, so we don't even get uh, confused by them. And I'm gonna move the soldering stuff out of the way. So if you wanna solder up your own LEDs, you've seen how it's done. So let's grab our spider butt. Now, if you recall, we made kind of like a, a platform for it to sit on. And we thought up a whole bunch of ways for spider butts. You can do insulation foam, you know, and, and make kind of a paper mache thing. And uh, we, we thought of everything, a trash bag with hay, and then you can paint the trash bag. Uh, the biggest thing is that I wanted this to be collapsible. We have our thorax and then we have the butt. And in order to be able to put this thing away, I wanted to be able to take it apart. So. Here is our, there's going to be like a lot of walking, walking in and out because I got like all the spider parts over there on the floor. Hopefully in order, hopefully in order. So you can see here my furry butt and you can see it comes to a point where the spinnerets would be. So the idea is I made a wire armature for this just to try and get the shape right. Now I can't promise it's gonna be even, all right, people? So the idea is, you know how a black widow spider butt is very tall at the top and then it slopes down. And so that was kind of the idea here. So it's not quite a Santa Claus bag because then you get kind of a, an oval, almost like a tarantula butt. So I tried my best to make this as, you know, spidery as black widowy as we could. So what are we stuffing it with? The original idea was to stuff it with hay. And let's see, is this the right one? Yep. Why am I frozen? Oh, I know why I'm frozen. I know exactly why I'm frozen. The camera's not plugged in. One sec, let me plug in that camera. That's my standing up camera. This is my sitting down camera. So hold on. So such that I don't get my head chopped off. I'll be right back. I'm actually gonna crawl under the computer right here. Where you be at? All right. I'm fighting some cables. All right. There we go. Let's see if that worked better. I'm still frozen. So let me go to the computer here and fix that. So computer and bear with me a sec guys. I'm going to deactivate and then reactivate the camera. There we go. Now it should be working. <laughs> Alrighty. So it must have come uh, undone. So anyways, the original idea was to fill this thing up with, there you are, is to fill this thing up with hay and that's my standing camera. Now I decide to sit, you know, so I'll stand for it. I'll stand for it. Uh, fill it up with hay. Well, it turns out all the hay is gone. I don't know what's going on every year. It seems like they're shrinking Halloween in favor of like, you know, Christmas, which fine. I love Christmas too, but I like Halloween a little bit better. Uh, so no more hay. Uh, and I went like quite a few weeks ago and the hay is gone. So what are we going to fill this with? Well, I grabbed quite a few things. So hold on, let me, let me grab my goodies here. So what do we got? I got stuffing and I got paper, you know, like pack 
packing paper. So I figure I'll start with the cheap stuff, the packing paper. And rather than just like shoving it up in there, I thought it might be a good idea to put a plastic bag in there. That way, you know, if it rains, now of course, I'm not really gonna leave this outside because the wind, I think, will just take it down. So instead, I am going to, where's the opening? There we go. Uh, stick everything in a plastic bag so that way in case it rains, well, the plastic bag is kind of protecting all of our stuff, you know, in here. So, it's a little short, but I think we can, we can make it work. And uh, Bill Fraser was saying, nice butt. He is loving the furry butt. Furriness, that's, I guess that's where it's at. Furry butts are in. And Jim Frozen is saying, uh, love it. I was a shipper building NUC subs, but before that I worked Pratt Whitney aircraft. I'm 60 now. You're a genius. Enjoy. Hold up. Don't be calling anything geniuses. Apparently you did not watch last week's uh, episode where I stuck my face in uh, a silly string nozzle to check something out. That's not quite smart. <laughs> So we'll see how this build goes, but I thank you anyways. All right, people, it's taking shape. Let's see if I can get it all the way to the little spinneret. And I don't know that this plastic bag was a great idea, but I'm using it out of spite. This is like a spite build. If this didn't work out, oh well, we're still using it just to make it work. Sometimes I think uh, the different things like try and not work on purpose. Like, I don't wanna be part of this chick's project. Get me out of here. And I'm like, nope, nope, there is no quitting. All right, let's get some of this stuffing up in here. Where's the hole? Oh, there it is. The fur all just like looks, looks as one. So I thought it'd be cool I, we don't have to do this tonight because it doesn't affect the functionality of the spider to paint two red stripes going down its butt. You know, just like a Black Widow spider. And uh, Merlin, Merlin is back. He says, I have no power here. I am missing the, be the best video yet. What? No. Well, it'll be up. It'll be up. You, you can watch it afterwards. All right, there's a stick of some sort <laughs> in there. And Dave is saying it was funny though, diva in green goo. Yes, I felt like I was having a, a Nickelodeon moment. And Jell is saying you could always pull some insulation out of your attic. I have a lot. Uh, you know, I just was up there storing, you know, different things. And I was like, ooh, it's like mountains. Like you can ski on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, what do you think that is? Look at that. That freaked me out. I thought it was a spider. You know, we're all talking spiders, and I'm like, oh, I was about to take off running and be like, screw the stream. I'm going to ditch you guys. Oh, yeah. Like, if I ran into something like this in someone's yard, I would be, like, tripping little kids, be like, here's some bait spider. Let me get away. Same thing with zombie invasion. I'm tripping you. I'm tripping you. I admit it. I am not even going to, like, act all nice about it. Mm -mm. I am tripping you. You know? I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to help you. But when push comes to shove, I don't know. So I'm hoping that I got the dimensions right between the butt and the thorax. Because maybe, like, the spider will have way too big a padonkadonk, you know, for his head size. But we'll see. He'll be a Kim Kardashian spider in that case. So he'll lure people with his, you know, nice round buttocks and, uh, you know, then ensnare them. And uh, Brad is saying, uh, I've got a generator you can borrow if you can drive to Minnesota and get it. Well, I don't know. It might be worth it. <laughs> but that's the worst being without power we were talking about that in uh in discord which reminds me if you guys have not joined discord it's the best way to find out like when i have to change a stream like i did for for this one or when the next streams are it's totally free and um 
you know, you can have at it. You can talk to each other. You can talk to me. I'm on there like pretty much every night uh, reading your guys' posts, looking for your projects. Uh, plus, I post some behind the scenes for our members so they can see how some of this comes together. Although this we kind of sewed. I don't even know where my plastic bag went. It's like in the butt somewhere. So I'm really liking the way this polyfill is shaping out the body. We have the paper down here, which makes it kind of, you know, not smooth, like wrinkled. Or that could be my sewing. So I stuck this through my sh sewing machine, but the fur is so thick that it just kept getting bunched and jamming up my machine. So I had to hand sew this. And it took me, what guys? Oh, I did a behind the scenes scenes stream. I think it took me like three hours to hand sew this thing. Cause I was like, I'm not taking it to a seamstress. Besides they wouldn't have it done on time, you know, or else I would. Uh, so I, I hand sewed the sucker myself. Oh yeah, we made templates and we're like, let's just go for it. Oh, I'm losing stuffing. I'm losing stuffing. All right. I need to look over this to see your guys' uh, your guys's comments. And Bill Fraser says Discord is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to learn it. It was a little odd. It's like a live chat forum. So if you're used to forums, it'll feel familiar, but it moves a lot faster. And getting used to the way the boards or in Discord they're called channels are kind of laid out. So it did take me a while. I accidentally like banned some of you in the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing, but I apologize and I unbanned you. <laughs> All right, so I finished up this bag and I think we're due for another bag so we can have like a real stuffed abdomen. But if you look at the shape, it's kind of spidery. We can kind of see where the, it's got a crunchy tail. And Listen, guys, the polyfill is just kind of bunched, but if we were to really fill it, it's looking pretty good. I think another bag will do it. And as we finish components, I'm going to take them out into the other room so we can do a final assembly there. Because I doubt I'm going to be able to assemble it here and then carry the whole thing into the other room. So, grabbing another bag of polyfill. And Jim Frozen is saying one and a half times, one and a half. <laughs> and Sylvia is asking, um, he's asking me if I'm also a violinist. So yes, uh, and I'm talking to the wrong you guys. You guys are over here. So yes, I play violin. Uh, I was trained, you know, classic violin, and then I went on to play electric violin and bands and things. There might still be like music videos on my Gearhead Diva channel, but you gotta scroll to like the end of time. Like when dinosaurs walked the earth type of stuff to probably find it, but I think they're still there. I think I have like a Kiss cover and then I have some Fast and Furious cover, something like that. So I'll answer Silvio from Brazil. Então, Silvio, sim, então eu toco violino. Então, se você vai no meu YouTube, tem, eu acho que tem dois vídeos de eu tocando, mas você tem que olhar bem embaixo. Você tem que ficar indo, indo, indo até quando os dinossauros estavam no planeta. De tão velho que são esses vídeos. Mas tá lá, eu acho que tá lá ainda. All right, and um, top, uh, top cat one has a great idea because I totally thought about doing this. And he's saying upholstery staples. So one of the things as I was sewing this and it was like the second hour into it, it dawned on me. And again, I had another project spite moment that easier yet, I could probably cut a, plot of, a piece of plywood for the bottom of the spider butt, right? Uh, and shape it nicely because spider butts on the bottom are flat. There's no shape. Like you can see, I even mimicked that here. It's a flat butt. You know, you can see where I seamed it right here and I seamed it here, and I seamed it here. So it's three pieces all seamed together. And after all this, or well, during it, I was like, you know what, I'm an idiot. What I should have done was cut a base of plywood, then stuffed it and done the upholstery thing and then stapled it from the bottom 
genius. That's what I should have done. Not this, like, let's just make this 10 times harder on ourselves type of thing, you know. But the only advantage of this is that I can unstuff it and use the stuffing for other projects. And now I just have a piece of fabric to put away. So that, it's, it's kind of a trade-off, you know, a little bit. Um, Jim Frozen wants it as a pillow. <laughs> ah, nice furry spider butt. And, uh, oh, uh, Carl James says, yes, Detroit Rock City. So I guess that one is still up. But everybody is saying they, they, are, lo they are loving the, uh, the comfy spider butt. So the spider butt is complete. And you can see all in its goalie glory. For the most part, we got the shape we were going for. You know, kind of big looks kind of like a whale but you know i guess spider butts and whales kind of look the same so you see i have an opening here and my idea is i'm going to put velcro and velcro and then just kind of velcro it shut like that you know um but we don't need it for for our purposes but yeah guys i think our little whale furry butt is looking pretty good i'm going to go ahead and put it in the other room so it's out of the way and it's not going to knock over like all of this stuff so uh, oh, Bill knows what these little sticks are for. So he's saying, um, Diva, those sticks are for stuffing small things like teddy bear arms. Ooh, good idea. I want to keep them. I could have used this for our fart detector project where we stuffed a little buffalo but hit a fart detector up on him. And yeah, I was like really trying to mash stuff down in there using big dowels and things. So yeah, I'm gonna keep these. These are, that's a good idea, good to know. And one is here, of course, he's wanting to, to put a bobcat uh, because I did go to Ohio University. So um, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that one did as well. Uh, because he's always wanting me to put the mascot somehow integrate it into the project so we, we got to find some clever ways uh that one dude 702 that's a comfy looking spider oh and sue you said he did see my violin video uh so i'll be back guys actually i will uh you guys can follow me in you guys can follow me yep there we go that's our testing ground so i'm going to walk over i'll be right there All right, so Dave is asking a pretty good question. How does the PVC work on the butt? I really toyed with this because in retrospect, I think what I should have done is put some kind of um, plywood panel, which I think I'm still gonna do. I think I'm just gonna go out tomorrow, cut up a quick like circle and attach it here with zip ties. Uh, so that way I thought about putting this inside the butt but what will happen is that the stuffing will start kind of like falling through and even if I were to sew it so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out there we're gonna put the butt on top on top of this thing right and then what I'm gonna do is create like a, a tie like a shoestring where I can tie here here and here so now the butt is tied to this bottom piece so that's my idea you know for getting it on this pvc so i forgot to take this with me so i'm gonna go ahead and do that so i'll be back i'll be back you guys can uh, follow me if you want there is a sleeper in there he's uh out of uh, out of the shot So that's uh, how I think the butt is going to work. But uh, yes, I think I'm going to go ahead and do some kind of plywood situation so the butt has something to rest on. Uh, and that should solve that. So what are we? We've done the butt. Uh, we can do the thorax. So 
here. You guys uh, recognize him from before. So there's a couple more things to do to him, which will not affect his functionality, but, oh, he's a little dusty. But you guys remember us painting his two kind of plates and shells. We put some paint here. He did get slimed a little bit and I was trying to pick these little things out. Luckily, Silly String dries kind of like a, a powdery type of thing. So it's pretty easy to, to pick it out. Uh, there's a little bit <laughs> in here but what i'm gonna do is paint uh his toupee which is like a, another plate but honestly guys didn't it look like a toupee it's a toupee <laughs> and i'm gonna paint it the same way as i painted here and he'll be done but if we have time to do that tonight we'll definitely do it so um top cat is saying uh, Rachel, check out Jennifer Lynn, Christine Wu, and Metal Cohen covering Toxicity. Speaking of violins, maybe do a version yourself. Yes, that I did see that video. It is awesome. Awesome. So yes, um, Toxicity is cool. I've always wanted to do a Metallica cover because I love Metallica. I love their solos. It's like the first stuff I started playing when I picked up guitar. Yeah, you know, so I was, I thought violin at the time I thought was way lame, like way lame, like guitar is so much more rocking, right? Yeah, I'm glad I stuck with the violin though, you know, because there's, it's versatile, not that the guitar isn't, it's equally, you know, as versatile, but guitar was always something I wanted to play, so I just went out, got a cheap guitar and an amp combo and would practice in secret in my room when my parents weren't there so they wouldn't be mad I wasn't practicing violin you know at the time <laughs> now I think it rocks all right so the idea for these I think right is we have two LEDs per eyeball so I'm going to do the one that you guys can kind of see and so what I did was see you see the holes I drilled right yeah they look they look fantastic I I carved out like a square because I think what I want to do is put all the electronics in this square and then I have a piece of plywood that goes over it with a hole so we can run out the wires that way say like this thing does end up getting in the rain well at least the electronics are pretty protected you know they're pretty protected so we have our double LED double madness and so I'm gonna stick it through this hole and I'm hoping I'm gonna wrap these two together because the Black wire is pretty stiff, it's, it's of a different gauge. But the green wire is like your typical hookup wire stuff, which for these LEDs, it's just fine. I'm trying to like get rid of it so I can just buy the colors that I use the most, obviously like red and, and uh, black. Now normally for projects, I hardwire everything. We eliminate the breadboard uh, like we did for our fart detector project, our lightning detector project. But because this is a Halloween project and it's basically gonna sit around, I mean, it may not, I'm really tempted to put it on the wall and have it like motion activated or something, not motion activated, but maybe activated by you guys. So maybe every 100th comment, it goes off, you know, or something like that. So I thought it'd be very, very fun to do something like that. So I am just, oh, here it is, but the, 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 the other one didn't make it. So I have an idea, never fret, for I have an idea. Maybe we can wrap it around something, you know, like fish it through. Would love, uh, so Top Cat's saying he would love to see that. Maybe like Sad But True. That's a great song. Um, Sandman, I was thinking that's another good one. Nothing Else Matters. You guys got me going. Actually, let me just tape this since we know the black one makes it through. That way we can test this with the Arduino. And I got a much brighter red, which I want to add to this thing. So if we have time to do it tonight, great. If we don't, you guys have already seen exactly how this paint job is done. So it's pretty much the same thing. All right, let's see if I can fish this thing through a little bit easier. So yes, maybe I'll take song requests. I wanted to do Rush, but Rush is like hard because there's so much instrumentation. Um, to do it. And before you do a cover, if you are going to put it up on YouTube, you do have to check 
that the artist allows it like i don't care if i don't make any money on it usually the artist will monetize it so if you are playing a cover you know you can't monetize it they they're fine with you doing the cover but any youtube ad that is run on that cover the money goes all to them which fine they're the artist they wrote the thing you know they deserve it uh i like to do it just more for fun and because you guys like to to listen to it so we got Vern vision on here says she rocks and plays an axe with old school metal. I'm old school metal all the way. Uh, nice detailed work. Expected nothing less. That's awesome. Didn't quite get as far in this project for today that I wanted to. But luckily I still will make it for Halloween. Uh, and uh, did I bump my head doing a floor install? <laughs> Alright, so I think... I think something like this. Right guys? And then what I'm gonna do is hot glue it. So let me fire up the hot glue gun, but we can fish the other screw in the meantime. And we can, uh, I'm not gonna glue the eye on, I'm just gonna lay it in there, just for us to see how it looks. So see, it looks pretty black. And I was afraid that if we put some kind of white diffuser, that it would just kind of turn, you know, you could definitely see the white. We'll see. Ooh, Black Sabbath. Oh, you guys are cranking out some goodies. Ooh. So these are our Arduino ones. So I'm going to put them aside still. We still got a couple more eyes we can do. We can do this guy right here. There's a, a bottom eye here. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and tape up. I got black all over my hands because I was painting outside, spray painting. And um, a lot of you guys know that we get crazy winds. So the spray paint gets more on you than on the actual object. I'm just going to remove this guy here for a sec so he doesn't get... Let's see, let me see if I can find his hole and back you guys on out. Just a little bit. It's too close. Too close. Well, what's he come out of? Oh, I'm going to wager a guess. So, I'm actually going to use one of these teddy bear pokey sticks because I think it's supposed to come out of here. Yes, sir. There it is. And Dave Wells is saying um, Rush would be awesome. Oh, Larry has a really good idea. Wax paper diffusion. Darn, yeah. That would work really, really well. But there's still time. I'm not gluing these eyes on tonight. So I can go grab some uh, wax paper and try and see how it looks. So what I may have to do, in fact, is glue this on. It was fortuitous that these little sticks... We're in the polyfill bag. So Jell is saying, did you test the LEDs? Not lately. Here's Jell with his, uh, you know, common sense going on right here. But I can't say anything because he nailed the uh, web shooter. Totally nailed it. He's like, that is not going to work because that can needs to be upright. And lo and behold, that is exactly what happened. All right, I see it. <laughs> its eyes falling out. <laughs> so I thought two LEDs would be like really, really, it would really pop, you know, in the night. And these two, because they're only going to have one permanent LED on, They'll be rather dim, you know, and then all of a sudden two per eye are going to turn on. So I figured that would be kind of, kind of dramatic. So we're not going to hot glue anything yet until we test them because gel's probably right. But they, they were working. 
but uh, sometimes you do get one in a bag that's a, a dud, you know. And Top Cat is saying, hopefully the eyes will have a eerie glow. Dave is saying, I have a thinnish brass wire. I pull stuff through holes such as this. Yep, yep, I had I had mine somewhere here, you know. But since we got that, that stick in a bag, I'm kind of liking that. Bill's like, good thing you kept those sticks. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I have a trash here. I was thinking of tossing them. Uh, Noah is here uh, from Facebook. What are you building? I'm sorry I'm late to the party. So we are building a giant motion activated web shooting spider now the entire thing won't be complete but we have all the co components complete enough such that we can test this thing all right so how many more eyeballs do i have i have two more eyeballs we definitely have to do the one on top that was like a dave request like i want an eyeball on top of his head and i was like why certainly <laughs> Jim Frozen is saying, my grandbaby is crying. I got to go keep it up. Oh, I got to go keep it up. We will. Oh, there's some like stuffing that, like foam. That is. I don't know. Do you guys see the stick? Oh, I see the stick. I wonder if it didn't make it through. I kind of checked all the holes. Oh, I hear something. All right, so the one on top of the head, I may have to like drill out or find the hole. So why are all the others and then figure out what hole is still you know, available, and then I'll know that's where this one came through. You would think it's like straight through, but I think I had to angle it in order to get it all the way down there. Now I am remembering. So, the hit eye will have to wait. Oh, Vern, he is talking like, like Noah and, and Merlin. So he's saying to put like a rocket motors and launch it. So one of our ideas for version two is indeed to add mobility. So it was either Larry or Jell or Merlin saying, hook it up to like an RC truck body. You, know, you can buy those really cheap. So the spider can like totally take off after the person spitting, you know, silly string as it does. So Noah's saying, sounds cool. Does it shoot silly string? Oh, it will before the night is out. Oh, and we're going to test it too. You know, we tested it uh, uh, last time we made our web shooter. And we're going to test it again, but with real victims this time. And so I think a couple comments up, maybe it was Jell saying to push it in through the bottom. That probably works really well. But alas, you are too late. I already pushed it from the top. <laughs> and Sylvia is saying... So he's asking um, if I took this type of spider from a real spider. Um, so yes, this is kind of... It's actually like a made-up spider, but we did take inspirations from the Black Widow spider because we liked the red... You know, this looks a little bit orange because I also like Halloween. So we incorporated both the red and the orange. I definitely want to put stripes going down its furry butt. And I'm sure we can, uh, you know, use some paint doing that. And Vernon uh, looks like he has a tip. If you heat hot glue with a torch, like a couple of sticks, using an air compressor around 120 pounds and spray the real, it will make a spider web. Like, you know what? You're right. I've seen that on, on, uh, on YouTube. It's true, and then you spray the, uh, like a fine misting of the hot glue. It creates a very realistic web effect. Really, really realistic. And looks very cool. And it's good for indoors because I have two cats. And they always say don't get the, the spider webbing because the cats eat them and then they can like, you know, 
three thousand dollars later because they end up in the hospital so i usually don't use those in the house let's see i guess i'll do this guy right here Oh, so Silvio, he was asking about the spider. Então, Silvio, essa aranha é, é da minha cabeça, não, não é uma aranha real, mas, mas eu olhei a aranha aqui que é chamada Black Widow Spider. É uma aranha preta que também tem, uh, tem assim, umas marcas uh, bem vibrantes, assim, vermelho. Eu gosto de laranja porque é que nem Halloween. Então, pus as duas cores, vermelho e laranja. E a bunda da, da aranha, eu quero pintar aquele pelo duas listas, assim, uh, uh, vermelho, eu quero pôr. Vai ficar muito legal. Aí, a gente ainda tem que pintar aqui. E a gente tem que pintar a cara da, da aranha. Mas talvez a gente não vai fazer hoje, que eu quero ver se funciona. Aí eu mesma posso fazer do mesmo estilo que eu fiz aqui, que vocês já viram. Aí eu vou pôr fotos na próxima semana, como saiu, e vídeo de como foi o Halloween. All right, guys. So, we got uh, some wiring. All of the LEDs that I prepared are here. So, that's one, two, three, four. And let's do our Arduino one so we can hook it up to the Arduino and see if they actually activate the way we want them to. And uh, Vern uh, Vision is saying exactly what I'm thinking. Thank God spiders don't fly. That would be like freaky, but they do use their webs to fly. All right, Silvio's liking the spider. All right, so because we only have one, two Arduino driven ones, I'm gonna do one each eye. And again, these are singles, so they can go into a pin of the Arduino. Now you can turn them all on if, if you were to use like a relay, uh, but I don't have one on hand and one would not come in time, you know, for Halloween. So that's for version uh, two, because I'd like to swap out the Arduino Uno for an Arduino Nano. Tiny, tiny little thing. You know, the, the Uno for this is a little bit overkill, but it's what I got, it's what I got. So Noah is asking, how many eyes does it have? And what colors do you plan to use? So all these LEDs here are red flickering LEDs. So we don't have to do any like coding or programming to get them to flicker. We already did that with, with the LED strip. And guys, I totally forgot. I did not heat shrink any of this. Like the tubing is on there, but it's not heat shrunk. So it doesn't matter. I was gonna pull them out anyways. So that way I can paint all this. And uh, you know, so it, I'm not too, uh, I don't think we're gonna get any shorts or anything like that famous last words so it has eight eyes it's got these two big ones here and then it's got um, these little eyes that are little deviled egg containers right here and the two big eyes look like that all from the dollar store <laughs> courtesy of the dollar store and most of the time, you can undollar store something, like make it look like it's custom, that it wasn't store bought. But I had a little trouble with this guy. He looks very like I'm a serving dish, like Rachel didn't do a good job disguising me. But I do want to put eyelids on it. You know, that's kind of a version, maybe even a version three type of thing, where it can have like blinking eyes. And I thought that would be like really freaky. All right, I'm gonna have to find this one too. Oh, there it is. And it's coming out. All right. So, and I'm not gonna hot glue any of these eyes on that way. What I can do is pull them out, heat shrink them, put them back in, and then glue them. Because I also want to make sure I kind of like the, the effect before I, 
I'd get married to it. I don't want to get married to the effect quite yet. So it might look a little Halloween-y, you know, with, with the eyes. But, you know, we can try putting on our, our fake eyes. See how it looks. We can do a quick light up. I have a 9-volt battery that we can try with it and see what, you know, how it ends up looking. Let's see. Maybe this camera might be better. So I'm going to put the eyes where we have LEDs. Ooh, this one's, a, this one's a nicer eye. Look at that. And so you see how I painted black. It is a bit translucent, and that's to kind of try and hide the LED, which I think the wax paper idea is going to do it better, uh, you know, but still transparent enough where you can see the red. So it doesn't totally hide it. So I have them kind of like lodged in there. So you can see that the eyes look, ugh, these dish eyes are, are the worst. But you can see that they're all just kind of like part of what we have going on here. And I'm going to put some like fur and we're going to do some of our fun stuff uh, to it. But let me grab this 9 volt battery here and we can see how these things look. So let's see here. Let me grab this mess of wires. I probably won't be able to do all of them at the same time, but let's see. Let's see an eye that's easy for you guys to see. Probably this one right here, this guy right here. So let's see how in one one set is and it would help if I crimp these or not crimp them but strip them strip them wires and using all these different colors is going to be quite difficult but we'll do it we'll do it in an effort to get rid of like weird crazy colors that I have that I never use we'll do it all right so I believe anything that's got a color on it is going to be positive, you know, and anything, of course, black will be black. So you see how it, it just, you know, when it's idle, it's just going to look like that. And now that I think of it, I'm almost thinking of hooking Arduino ones to all of them. So the whole spider will light up even brighter when motion is detected rather than just these eyes. So I'm glad I didn't glue anything and, and commit to it. That's looking pretty cool. So multiply that by eight. I think it'll look, it'll look cool. And uh, uh, Dave Beck saying, I'm giving you the top eye. <laughs> uh, top Cat says, Beatles flying back in the USSR. Ooh, that's a good song. That's a good one. So, like uh, Jell was saying, we tested those. So this pair belongs together. And let me strip the Arduino ones because we're going to put them into the Arduino. So anything that's blue is going to be Arduino. I'm glad I did two per eye because the one I think would just be wimpy. And of course, this is a 9-volt battery. The more volts you pump through it, the more, um, the brighter it's going to be, you know, up to its, its limit. So the limit for these are, is 12. It's a R12. All right, so I'm just going to pop this off. And, oh no, our little eyeball fell out. So this is our positive right here. And this is our negative. So yeah, that's working too. So yes, I did test all these, you know, just prior to, so I think they'll all be fine. Uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to 
increase the number of LEDs in these eyes to really make this thing. It's kind of like a shimmer, but I think I'm gonna add a third LED for all the static eyes. And then for these two, I'm going to add two, um, two static LEDs per eye and then maybe have two or three that come on with the Arduino now that I see the way it's, it's looking. So Jim is liking the spider and Noah is saying, ooh, in the dark, we should um, test it in the dark. That's not a bad idea. Let me grab the, these two. I'll be right back. Oh no, that didn't work. Let me shut this above headlight here and I'll be right back. I am just gonna close the lights. Oh, and close my fan. All right. Here we go. I'm going to crawl up behind you guys. And here I am. I'm just going to turn this uh, light in the back here off. Actually, that one doesn't really affect anything. And I'm going to turn the other light off. And then I'm going to trip all up as I come back to you guys. All right, tripping, tripping. All right, let's see what happens. So it's nighttime and the kids are coming. So I'm gonna light this bottom one right here that we lit first. So let's see. I mean, maybe that's kind of bright. Maybe I was wrong. I, that does look kind of neat. I need to spread them out a little bit. They're kind of clustered together. So when I hot glue them, I'll put one on one end of the eye and another on the other end of the eye. That's looking pretty good. Awesome. All right, guys, let me turn on the lights before I, I uh, trip and final destination my own self. All right, here I am. Here I go again on my own. All right, don't quit what you're doing. Singing is not great career. All right, guys, so we got the eyes working and we'll hook up the ones to the Arduino. Uh, and Noah said it, it looked awesome, uh, awesome in the dark. And Jim has a couple good ideas. Uh, just a couple of under lights and so i'm thinking he's meaning to put some colored like we kind of have like the the green going on here if you put some colored lighting just kind of behind the spider that's going to make it look even more creepy so maybe like an orange light for halloween or or green or some or purple purple and red oh now we're talking now we're talking so we got the eyes the strategy for the eyes now you know cleared away so I think the big thing now is the strategy for the underbelly right here and getting the electronics mounted uh, up in here wrong way. So let's see what we got. And I'm going to take these eyes out so I don't crush them. Oh, and Larry said another way to diffuse is to smear the inside lens with Vaseline. Ooh, I can try that. I got some spares that I warbled, you know, so I can definitely try it on them. And Jim is saying that foam work is plus one. You should have seen the first carving of, there you guys are, of this, of this foam. It didn't go so well because I glued up all the layers. The glue wasn't dry, even though it dried for like 24 hours, but it wasn't quite dry. There's something about this foam that glue just doesn't like, and this is like every glue. But if you let it really dry for a very long time, it'll dry really, really well. You just gotta be patient, which I usually am not. So, uh, so thanks for, for the foam work. This is kind of a, a quick project we're doing. We did a lot more details with our Frankenstein uh, castle. So that was like a very cool foam miniature project. So what we're gonna do here is try and put in a couple components. Like, like I said, I'm gonna stick with the breadboard. I'm not going to permanently wire anything so that way I can re-harvest it. And in essence, rob Peter to pay Paul. I constantly harvest stuff off of prior, you know, prior projects. And so one day the project is a Peter, the other day it's a Paul, you know? So right now the spider is the Paul. He's getting all the goodies that I rob off uh, 
our fart detector here. So somehow I want to fit this in here like that, but, and we have all of our LEDs coming in. So somehow, because there's going to be a plywood here. So I want to try and fit it in this thing right here. Who is ringing the bell? I wonder if Ripley needs to go out. Let's see here. Yep, she's sitting right there. She is like, I need to make a pee. So please help me make a pee. All right, let's get this wired up real quick. And then I will uh, take a break and uh, let her do some business. So I'll try and make it quick. I'll try and make it quick. So let's see here. I'm going to try and put, maybe I'll do it this way. So I think we can hot glue our components like this, but I need to plug in there and I need to plug in here. Oh, Noah's asking about the legs. So that's a, that's a tough one. So we made legs, we made it out of pool noodles and I'll totally show you how I made that, you know, after we, we get done this. Um, and Jim was saying my fourth old grandbaby is, uh, he needs to watch. All right, so I think I need access to this and this, so we can't kind of put it against that. So maybe I'll flip this around like that. Oh, is she crying? She's crying. Oh, where is she? Oh, she's gone because she's here at the door. All right, so she's probably really got to go. So in the meantime, because this uh, hot glue is already doing its thing, I'm just going to quickly use it. And see, it's even got the peel stick on the back because I haven't, you know, done anything permanent with it. I'm not even taking that off. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Let's kind of put a, a gob of glue and get it down there. And then do the same here. Just like a dot, you know, so I, it's easy to remove later on. All right, so guys, I'm going to have to take a mandatory break because someone is crying that they need to go. So I'm going to leave it on this view so you guys can see when I go. You see the bells hanging from the door. Uh, when she rings those bells, uh, we taught her to ring the bells when she needs to do her business. She is less than a year old, so she's doing really, really well. No accidents, and we've done a good job of taking her when she rings the bell. So I shall be back, peoples enjoy the view you need to go let's go All right, I need some potty break music, <laughs> you know, dee, 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 like girl from Ipanema or something like that. <laughs> um, all right, so Dave Vex says puppy and uh, Larry's like, we can wait, we can wait. 
uh, Jim saying her his daughter is uh, second year at MIT and have I sent her links to you? She loves it. <laughs> Larry says, good Ripley. Yes, yeah, she's been very, very good. All right, so these are pretty much in here. So let's start wiring this stuff up. And I'm going to try and remember how we even did this. Did the top eye hole get blocked by the electronics, Dave is asking. No, the top hole comes through this hole right here, I believe. Uh, and I don't know why, it's, it's probably blocked. So I'm gonna take my hot poker and re-poke. You know, uh, after we're done the stream, I'm gonna pull all this through again uh, so I can uh, put it in the way I want and add more LEDs. But that's the culprit right there. I'm thinking that hole right there is the one that seems like it resealed shut. It's like the foam healed itself. So Jim is saying it's starting to get cold here in Sherbrooke. Same thing here uh, in Philadelphia. Pretty, it's getting chilly. It's, it's like winter is here, no doubt about it. So I'm just uh, removing things from the old breadboard, which was like a huge breadboard that we don't need and transferring it to this breadboard. So first thing we're gonna do is put my eyes on. You know, let's just put my eyes on here. And we're gonna connect the five volt power, which is already connected in our Arduino. And for those of you guys that kind of missed the wiring last week, and we're gonna hook it up to the power of our breadboard. And I'll try and kind of tuck this nice, just so it doesn't get in the way. And then we're going to take a negative, this guy here, but you can see his little end is broken. So let me just uh, strip a little bit just to have enough. So I figure for a one-time kind of project, the breadboard will be fine. I don't think it's going anywhere. And then after Halloween, I harvest it so <laughs> So here's a ground and we kind of went over how, how we did all this. So you guys can always like refer to that video if you need a refresher. So we have power and ground going to the board. So whatever we put on the board now, we'll get power and ground. So he, this is the funny part. We got to figure out where we're going to put this sensor and it's got to live somewhere here. And so for the time being, I am going to glue the thing you know, like that. And of course you guys see nothing of what I'm doing, like totally nothing. So I will, I will assist in that regard. There we go. And I will pull you guys out. So see, I want it to be in front of the spider so that way it senses people. And so we're gonna hide it here. Now you'll definitely notice we're missing its pedipalps, like its little fang things. And for this year, I'm gonna omit them. They're super cool, but for version 2.0, I wanna rig them to more servos so that way when it's about to spray, the little the little fangs go Wee! like that. And, and maybe I'll record that sound effect that just came out of my mouth right now, because that was terrifying uh, for the kids. So let me figure out a way to kind of, I might be able to just hot glue by the connectors for us to test it. Obviously that's a bad idea, but uh, just for, for now, so. Hot glue there. Because it, it'll be easy for us to unglue it if we want to move it. And you can see if I turn this over, you see two orange adjustment knobs. And that adjusts for uh, distance sensitivity and timing sensitivity. But you can also like, uh, you know, fix that through the code as well. Uh, especially, you know, sen uh, timing, you know, the time delay. Now, not all sensors come with those features. Some of them are just like, they have a range, they have a delay and that's it. And you can mess with the delay in the code, but you can't do anything with the distance. It is what it is. So we got everything going here and the sensor, let's wire up the sensor. And I'm trying to remember which is which. I do believe 
This one is definitely brown, the brown. See, is what happens when you use kaleidoscope colors, but it looks like I kind of have it wired similarly to our, you know, our servo, which usually the orange is the signal line. So I think this goes into, let me uh, confirm the code. So I didn't write down what pins go where. So let me just take a, a look at my code here. And we looked at this code last week. It's the same code and it had one blinking red LED when the sensor went off. All I did was just add more of them. So go away Norton antivirus. Get out of my face for right now. I'm firing up our Arduino and the camera is like a focus in here so I can be in the mist. A little fuzzy, a little fuzzy. So Let's see here, I got the sensor going into pin seven, help me remember this. So it's going into pin seven and the servo is going into pin nine. All right, so seven, seven, seven. So I'm gonna assume this orange one is what we got going on here. And now I gotta like use bionic eyes to see, so I'm gonna count backwards, 13. Let me do this so you guys can see too. You can see the agony, the agony. <laughs> so we're gonna put this in pin seven. So that's 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, right? And then now this needs to get power and ground. So all I'm gonna do is plug it in here. And this one, we could probably just Oh no, we need this. I'll just have to hot glue this extra uh, away. And I think for now, I'm not going to attach the, the plywood for now, just for us to test this. And then the green I'm gonna imagine is power. So I think that's right. That's usually how, how I do things when I use kaleidoscope colors. So we got our sensor done. We need the servo done. And we need, actually, let's do our LEDs. So here we have at least our Arduino LEDs. So the blue ones are the Arduino LEDs. Right here. And what we need with them is to make our lives easier, just connect some uh, DuPont connectors, which I have floating around. So here I have like a positive. So you can see I already cut the little other end off and I probably have like a negative, you know, floating around somewhere. But we'll start with the positive and then move our way from there. Oh, here's our negative. So I'm gonna put him here. So all I'm gonna do is just strip. Oh, it's already stripped. How nice. And we have to figure out which is negative and which is positive, you know, because I so intelligently made them both the same color. Um, so let's, because I was going to take them out anyways. So let's see here. That's this eye. So I'm going to pull on the positive. Okay, so it's this one. Go me, right? Typical. Actually, I got an idea. Because these are obviously so long, I do want to cut them down, but not quite yet while we were working. So I love these little things. They're like these quick connects. Listen, they're not great. Don't use them for permanent installations, uh, you know, because they're not that strong. But for things like this, they're awesome where you just want to do a quick like does it work so there there's our positive and I'm going to put it right to, let's use pin 13 right and then the negative coming out of that hole, I'm gonna do the same thing and we're gonna put him in ground. And I probably lost the black one, didn't I? Probably went flying. 
We got stuff. We got way too much stuff going on here. Oh well, there's another one. You shall be my victim. So all I'm doing is just ooh, wrong hole. Wrong hole. And Jim saying, um, Rachel could play us a 30-second music hit. You're so talented. Um, well, we could incorporate some some jamming into these builds. I don't see why not, you know. Kind of like the web shooting spider. I was thinking of like making him do something, you know, every time something happens. I don't know. We'd figure it out. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. So I should like grab my violin and hang it here somewhere. Put it on a hook right behind me. There you are. Not here. Yeah, yeah. Getting confused. All right. So we have this guy hooked up. <laughs> Just shoving it in there. And we have, um, we'll hook up one eye and see how, how that works out. And I'm going to grab all these other guys here. That is going to look so cool. All right, so the next thing we have to figure out is our servo situation. Now, if you recall, in retrospect, I'm going to do a little bit of Monday morning quarterbacking on myself. And that is that Larry probably had the best solution for this, which is, listen, go buy one of them Spider-Man web shooters. They're uh, horizontal. You go like that, there's a lever. You can use the servo to depress the lever, and it would shoot the silly string. And I was like, well. I love Halloween. This is something I want to use year after year. And what if they stop producing this web shooter? You know, they have very specific cartridges. So I wanted to come up with like a universal solution, which totally works. But you do have to, if you wanted to shoot like, you know, horizontally, you know, like if I were wearing this on my arm like this and I'm shooting you guys, you can modify the nozzle to get it shooting. And we did that. It totally worked. The problem is that these cans are meant to be used upright you know right the second you turn it over it's like totally shooting the way it used to but as soon as it gets to about half the can it just starts sputtering and that's because there must be like a straw or something that maybe the horizontal web shooter from spider-man is probably designed maybe the nozzles designed differently i don't know but it needs to be upright like this so wouldn't it be awesome if we can put something that kind of like hugs the spider's body and it shoots the web? That was my original idea, but we're going to have to keep changing out the cans because as soon as it gets halfway empty, we got to change a can. So instead, what we're going to do is mount this upright and have it shoot from its nozzle regular style. So the idea is that eventually we're going to be using his like fang pedipulp things to kind of conceal the can. So when he goes, ooh, the can is revealed and he starts shooting his, his uh, you know, stuff. So for this time around, we're not gonna have the, the fang things. That's gonna be a version two. But I'm gonna grab the plywood because I added this top part right here. And the idea is that the can sits on top like that. We're gonna tie a string like we did to the nozzle. It depresses the nozzle. Um, and in retrospect, I'll probably redesign this to have something here that depresses the nozzle more reliably than a piece of string. So then we're going to attach this top portion to some plywood, quarter inch plywood. And I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't rock, you know, too much. I think if we put two bolts holding it, it should probably hold it still. And I took Merlin's idea. We had this tied via a rubber band and every time it activated, it wiggled a little bit, you know, because of the servo putting so much force on the nozzle. So I'm explaining to you guys all this in kind of like blurry vision, you know, it's, it's like, it's loving this part of the project right here. So in retrospect, you know, uh, Merlin had a good idea of using hose clamps. I didn't have one big enough. So he's like, combine two, no duh. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, so that's what I did. It's floating around here somewhere and we'll, uh, we'll get the can on here and then get it hooked up. So let me grab my plywood. I'm actually going to move this out of the way for now. Oh, we'll just kind of put it over there. There we go. Let me get my plywood. Well, plywood and PVC frame. So, 
I think what I'm gonna do is we have our PVC frame here that we built the very first one. So you can see all those T's where the legs are gonna come out. And on the bottom, we have a T here. And I thought this T is a good idea because you can put in any type of PVC arrangement that you want. And I was like looking for a pipe, but there's not one near me. So you can have a pipe coming out. You can make a whole base or a stand for it out of PVC pipe. You can also stake the PVC pipe into the ground. You know, lots of options. We ourselves, I have like a little small footstool for our testing purposes. I'm just gonna kind of like rest this on our footstool. So he's not gonna stake into anything. So let me move this back and let's start assembling the thorax here. Then we can test it and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap it up and we are getting to the legs. I know one of you guys had, um, you know, talked about the asked about the legs. So we'll definitely do that. So you can see the the uh, board that I have here. I'm hoping it'll be enough and it'll go on this way. So basically I have an access hole here for all the wires. It is clearly too small now that I see all the bunches of wires that are gonna have to come out. I'm gonna drill that bigger, but for now we'll, we'll use this. I also have these tiny little holes too that we can use zip ties to zip tie this on. Then I'm gonna use Velcro strips. So that way we can pull the thorax off real quick if we have some kind of electronics snafu going on and then just Velcro it back on. Again, this is kind of like a temporary fun project. It's not like a Halloween decoration that stays out all of October in your yard. Although you can, we get a lot of like wind here. So, you know, something like this, I would probably like put indoors, but not activate the servo, you know, and uh, put it outdoors just for Halloween, as long as it's, it's a nice night. So I have some zip ties here and we can start zip tying the situation down and do I have this correct no I don't so I'm going to use maybe one zip tie Ooh, no we don't want to do that no we need to mount our thingy on this first what was I doing so it's gonna have to go like this and let's move this thing here for now we'll do this later we'll do this later we got to mount our our web shooter which is the big like crude ta of this entire project. So my idea is to mount it back back here. So it's a little, you know, a little top heavy. Mount it back here and drill two holes and secure it with bolts, you know, going through. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill in our holes now. Let me see what kind of voltage we have. Oh, voltage action. Let's see here. I got this little kit. Maybe I'll just use something from from this kit. See if we can find something that'll sit relatively relatively flush. You know, maybe a little little guy like this. Oh, he's he might be a little bit too not not long enough. So I might actually go and raid these guys right here. These are a quarter, an inch and a quarter, like that. Yep, much better, right? So I have these guys and I have their nuts and let's get some washers. Now for these, I don't think I'm going to use the nylon locking ones um, because we're probably, we might need to remove this. I don't know, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind. So let's uh, pick an appropriate drill bit. You know, maybe something like this. All right, peeps, let's do this thing. All right, so I think I'm gonna go like here. And my workbench uh, surface, I don't really care about. It's not glued on. So it's almost time for a change. Swap it out. All right, so if I'm going to put this in here,
And uh, <laughs> Jim Frozen is saying Norton equals virus from before. And Merlin is saying pin 13, clever. It's Halloween. Oh, yeah, it is Halloween. All right. So I'm going to, I probably should have just done this all in one fell swoop. I'm backing this up towards our hole. That's about center peeps. Yeah. And uh, Jim is saying, hot glue the string can, don't make it more difficult. Yes. So we did that last time and we do use hot glue. So I'll, you know, we're going to go through it again just to set up the new can. And, um. Carl is saying, oh, it didn't go all the way through. Oof. Carl is saying, Harbor Freight Tools. I'm sorry, man, that is my jam. Although anymore, I have to say that Amazon now has a lot of tools. It, in, in the before times, Amazon's tool selection wasn't, you know, a ton. Or you had to buy stuff in ridiculous amounts of bulk, you know. So now they're doing way, way better. There we go. Let me see if I, I see the light. Let me line this up. I'm using you guys to line it up. There we go. There. Kind of like a, a rudimentary. All right. And I'm just gonna finish drilling this. And Jim is saying, you have to love this to make it, uh, to make the kids enjoy. Oh, yeah, I love Halloween stuff. It's just so, like, it's just fun. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. So, I am going to, oops, wrong one. That is not a washer. This is a washer. So I'm going to put the flatter part through here. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Merlin caught me. He said, I think the bracket is backwards, and it was. So I was about to attach it like this. So it was going to shoot silly string backwards as if out its butt, right? <laughs> Very Rachel, you know? Let's just have it shoot out its butt. So yes, Merlin is right. I gotta turn this around so it faces forward. There we go. We don't want no butt shooting spider. We want a front shooting spider. There, I'm gonna give you guys struggle vision. So you can see me watch me struggle <laughs> and do I have a there we go I suppose I could probably change the bit of the drill and make our lives a ton easier but I'm almost there I'm almost there and Jim Frozen is saying magnets Magnets for what? Although, I've been trying to find a way to make mounting and unmounting the can more of a breeze than, you know, is our situation right now uh, with this. You know, in, in my, you know, quest to build something custom that we can use with any can, I kind of made things difficult because imagine, for me, one can of silly string will be enough. We have a decent amount of kids, but not a ton, not a ton. And I probably won't use the silly string part really early in the night where like the infants come in, you know, cause it'll probably hit them in the face. <laughs> but when like the, you know, the older kids, not like high schoolers, but like above infant age, you know, whatever that is come by, then I can turn on the web shooter portion. Merlin is confirming you're all good now. So Jim, magnets where? Hold the, oh, to hold the can. The only thing is I don't think magnets, once that servo goes, it twists the can big time. But I do have some strong magnets. Magnets. The hose clamp, the only, oh, I forgot the washer. 
uh, the only problem with the hose clamp is that say you need to change out the can that's going to take you forever and a whole bunch of kids are going to pass by and not be victims you know you need them to be vic victims magnetic tape up and down that's one thing to try we can try like magnetic tape i don't have any but try it test it out you know and see how well it holds the can and it may because then you can just pull the can right out you know and take it you know take the string off with it you know because right now it's like you got to undo the the hose clamp and it's like a hole to do so if you're running a haunted house or something probably if i had to do this again i would use larry's web you know buy the spider-man web shooter idea because you can just swap out cartridges so much faster that way you know velcro strapping i have velcro strapping unfortunately um I tried it right before the stream and it's not long enough for the can. So I think Velcro strapping is probably going to replace the hose clamp because I have to go to the hardware store anyway. So I think I'm going to just buy some big old strips. I do have like uh, upholstery ones that I'm going to use for our spider butt to seal our spider butt, but it's like weak as hell, you know? So I know that it's probably not going to hold the can nice and tight. What is going on? I hear, I hear mischief afoot. Yep, there's the cat. There's Amicus. And that, that dog is Eeyore, uh, the big black dog. He's five to six years old. We don't know. He's a rescue. His name is Eeyore because he is literally the character. That is his personality. And then that is Amicus. He is uh, a little over a year. His sister comes out from time to time. She is a torty. Uh, and, you know, obviously they're, they're both the same age. And uh, Amicus, the orange cat, and Ripley, the dog you saw before, the St. Bernard-looking dog. It's a St. Bernard-Bernese um, Mountain Dog mix. They're actually besties. I think Ripley likes Amicus more than she likes Eeyore. They're like super besties. And uh, Jim Frozen is saying, how strong is the servo? It is not that strong, but damn strong enough. I was like surprised you know part of me was the gears are metal which i knew we would probably need because i don't know how hard it is to depress you know the the plunger i know certain paint cans like your finger gets tired so i have one of those like spray things to make it easy um so but i was pretty surprised i do have little micro servers with like plastic gears that i use for more like you know fun stuff you know that kind of thing and Jim Frozen still is calling dibs on that pillow. He's like, I want that spider butt pillow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I might sleep with it tonight. Now that you guys keep talking about it, I'm like, oh, comfy spider butt pillow. <laughs> so, so much patience. Oh, yeah. You know, we try not to do the watching paint dry kind of streams, but sometimes it's this paint watching paint dry kind of streams. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put this over here and... Now we have the cats uh, thinking about coming in here. And I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. And let's mount our can and get all that ready. So where did it go? Here I've already prepped it. And so for those of you that didn't watch the last stream, I have these straws that are going to guide the string that's going to be looped around the cap down towards the servo. And you can see that it's angled a little bit because the servo sits like right here on you know, it, not quite centrally, you know, located, you know, and you can see the cap from this angle's got a groove and I'll try and do this. And so I melted a groove uh, in the cap. So our, our rope can sit in there a little bit easier, but on top of that, oh, we are going to, you know, to be gluing this whole thing together. So let's see here. Let me get my, my string and let's prepare the string like this and let's hot glue this sucker on. So we're going to prep this can and see this is what I'm talking about like having if you have to switch cans you best prep a whole bunch of these right you know if you know you're running a haunted house or something like that but I know I'm only going to need one can for the night so this solution works for me. If not, Velcroing this and pre-preparing a whole bunch of these cans ahead of time and Larry's idea with the, uh, the Velcro, that way you can like snap them in and out, in and out, in and out and not miss a beat. So I'm just kind of holding this until it, it dries or 
Oh. Ouch. <laughs> and I'm going to slip this string into the straw already. Oh, get, get it going. And we're going to test this without putting the can in first. Oh, yeah. I know you people. And then we'll put the can in. Where'd my scissor go? Oh, right here. Ooh, Dave Wells says you can use a water bottle holder for a bicycle to hold ooh, to hold the can and mount it to the wood. I have a spare. Oh my gosh, but it's in, a, in an unreachable place. But I might try that for Halloween. That's a good idea. I think I do have a spare. So if I were to push down on these strings, theoretically, it will silly string. So I'm, I'm gonna refrain from doing that. And so what I'm gonna do now is flip this over like that. And we're gonna mount the can like this. And I'm gonna clamp, I'm gonna hose clamp it now since I kind of got that handy right here. We're gonna hose clamp this sucker. And I'd like to paint this whole thing black so it's less visible. I'm actually going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. it started is the worst once it starts then it's like party time oh I think I got it so it's in all right so now all we got to do is crank it crank it where's the glue hold on people hold on people Jim Frozen is saying um we, we have ideas, but you're doing it. Go. Yeah. Well, we're kind of doing it together because you guys do help get me out of some stuck points sometimes. Where I'm like, I have no idea. Jim is saying four days to go. Yeah. Oh, did I turn it the wrong way? I did turn it the wrong way. I get to talking to you guys. And I lefty loosey it. All right. We want righty tighty. That went in crooked. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can. And that's going crooked. Let me put this in a better, in a better way to, to hold it. Oh, I have an idea. I'm gonna just put this sideways like this. And get this kind of. I need another hand. I need a shop Igor. There we go. How's about we do this so I can see what I'm doing? There we go. It seems to be in now. did this combining the clamps all right now we're gonna try and get it to line up and not crush the can how 
half an hour later. And then somebody mentioned uh, fishing line. That would probably work too. String on the outside, yeah. Do I have a ratchet set? I do. Dave Rawls has a good idea. He's like, knock it off with that, whatever it is you're doing. Go get yourself a 5 16 Suck it. We're almost done. By the time I grab it. And Jim Frozen was saying he spent uh, 26, 25 years working with people building nuclear submarines. Where were your smart ideas? Oh, they weren't so smart. <laughs> I don't know about nuclear submarines. Okay, so I'm basically putting this so it's oop, in the front. So I have quick access to it. But I'm kind of liking the Velcro idea. I am not going to lie. All right, and I'm aiming the can, making sure it's aiming perfectly forward. And then we're going to test this. Then I shall complete the spider and post it up for you guys. I've got four days to go, like one of you guys said. So I think that's pretty, oh, that's nice and tight, unlike the situation we had going on. So I'm just going to kind of lay this over the table so we can tie. Uh, I'm going to use this little screw here, and we're going to tie our servo. Actually, we're not going to tie our servo. Let's test this darn thing first before we start tying up servos and then finding it, it don't work. So, let's see. I need one of these. This connects to ground. And I'm just going to reach over to the spider here and connect it to ground. And the red one, I'm going to connect to power. Seems to be off power. All right. Yeah, everyone's saying, knock it off with this thing right here. Please, please get yourself a 516s. Uh, so I'll have to prep that. All right, so, and then I'm missing an orange. So. Let's put our orange. I'll just grab a new one. I know where it went off to. And hooking up our orange. What did I say this was? Servo is nine. Nine. Oh dear. All right, so let's test our situation here. I'm going to bring this forward like that. And we have our, which view is best? Which view is best? Oh, that's, that's pretty good. You're gonna see the servo move and I'm not gonna hook it up to the string because look at the way this nozzle is aimed at my face, like right here, right? This part of my face right here. So we're not gonna do that. So let's see here, let me grab my computer and let me just re-upload the code just in case, you know, I changed it. I don't think I did, but I might have changed it just to include, um, you know, our LEDs, all of our LEDs. But I only have the one of them hooked up. So let's just upload the code. And also, this will power the Arduino. So the way I plan to power it is through this barrel jack right here, not through, you know, the computer. But for today's test, we shall be powering it through the computer. There we go. So you see lights on. Let's upload this code here. I got computers. I got all kinds of stuff uh, up, up on this desk. All right, so let's upload. And you see like two little lights blink. It's kind of tough to, oh, all right. So the sensor does take a minute or two to warm up, so it'll go a little bit wonky. Uh, but then we'll test and see if it works before we hook it up to the servo. So our sensor is like right there. And so I'm just gonna 
go like that. Oh, Bill Fraser wants me to have another last last week moment. Ooh, here was our our orange that I was looking for. So I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. And hopefully we have, you know, the wires hooked up correctly. So you can see it seems like it's working. Now it warmed up. All right, so I say we test it. And for that, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna turn this off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna zip tie this thing to the PVC situation. So that way it's got something to hang on to. But before that, it's turned off, right? Yes. In fact, people. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in a couple different knots. This string, like I was saying the last time, is silky smooth, so silky smooth. Problem, it doesn't hold knots. So you just wanna be sure that it will. And in fact, this servo horn is a little bit crooked. Let me readjust it. See how it's sitting sideways? It's not perfectly 90 degrees. Um, let's just adjust that real quick because it's probably not going to not going to spin enough to um, you know make our, our can work. It's not going to depress the nozzle enough. So I'm just going to go like that. Now you see how this is metal. Problem is, this is not, you know, so it does. I'm wondering how easy it is to strip, but it's better than the micro servos I usually use, which are like all plastic, which is fine for some fun, fun little projects. Ooh, almost went down. I got it. Spider-Man reflexes. Bowling knot. Jim, Jim knows his knots. I do not know my knots. I'm gonna use the, the simple Rachel knot that wore the last time, but I should learn the bowling knot. I'll have to look that up. I'll watch a video tonight. The bowling knot. Merlin Maggi is a brain too. Heck yeah, a lot of you guys are, are, oh. Dave is saying don't slime yourself in the face. He's right, because I'm tying this tight and I might accidentally get it. So here. Oh, can I tie it with one hand? And I'll show you the legs real quick, but we're not going to put them on. All right. So I'm going to tie another knot and another and one could probably just hot glue this situation so it's done. Or look up the bowling knot before I do that. Um, so the bowling alley and bowling pins, it tightens on its own. Okay, cool, I'm gonna have to look that up. Let's see what the bowling knot is. Um, all right, so let's get this hooked up to our spider PVC frame and then put this on top of the PVC frame. So, um, or I'm going to lay it on top because I don't feel like feeding all of the wires through this little hole quite yet. So we are going to sandwich all this together. And before I do that, let me show you guys the legs real quick because they still need to be painted. Um, mm, all right. then. So let me get this situated this is gonna go like this it's gonna lay on we're gonna zip tie it but not right now we're just gonna leave it so yeah the nozzle theoretically should clear the bottom of the PVC pipe because I see the nozzle right and so once we zip tie it it should be good so I'm gonna lay this over the workbench so let's see what view is good maybe something like that kind of Kind of, my shirt's all bunching up. It's bunching up. All right. So then we're going to lay our situation over that, right? And he's going to be Velcroed to our 
you know, to our plywood. So he's gonna lay like that. Now legs, let me go get the legs. I will be right back. So leggy leggy situation. Oh, they might already be here for me. So what I did was take pool noodles and carve them into legs. So the pool noodles started out like that. And this was probably the longest part of the project. No, this was the longest part of the project. This was a second. I thought, no, I'm gonna shape some poo noodles so they look more like spider legs and stuff like that. This will take no time at all. It took two days. It took two days to do this. So with a Dremel and a craft knife and just like a, this hacksaw right here, you know, to get the basic shape, I went ahead and shaped it. So this part goes into here. This is like the, the uh, you know, this portion of the spider. And what we can do is put like a cotter pin to hold the spider leg because the idea is we want this to be able to be broken down at, after Halloween. It's kind of tough to store something with like scraggly legs and stuff. And you'll see that I have a bracket on this end because each of the joints articulate. And I thought it would be fun for version like three when it like spits, it'll have its RC truck under it and the legs can kind of go like this, like kind of crazy and stuff. So it's got three joints and I'll just kind of show you this, you know, this leg. And so the joints, let me find one with a hook. There we go. So the joints go like this and I got nuts with a, you know, a nylon bolt. And if you tighten it enough and we tested this during a previous stream, now you get articulation. Now this joint is hella ugly because it's showing, right? Hella ugly. So what we're gonna do instead is I have tons of leftover fur from our furry butt and we're gonna put red stripes on the fur and use fur to cover this joint, you know, and kind of bring the fur up into the leg. The legs are just base coated black. So it looks kind of like pool noodles painted black. We're gonna apply the same paint technique that we did on this foam portion. So it's all gonna match, right? But, you know, you can kind of see how that works. And then this end here, you know, it's a little tiny leg. And you can see how thin I got that foam, you know, to make it as pointy as possible. Now it's not going to be like a point, you know. Uh, we could put some kind of stake to stake it into the ground. But I think with the body supported, you know, you can kind of position the legs and they'll pretty much stay. So these are the basic shapes that every leg has. Now each leg is a slightly different size. The ones in the front, if you look at a black widow spider, are very long. That's the black widow's longest legs. Second are the legs in the back, the very back. Those are second longest. Then the, the second set of legs are like the next one and then the ones in the back are very short. So I went ahead and kind of looked at a picture, like took measurements and then extrapolated to try and get something kind of cool. Um, but I think, I think it's gonna look pretty cool like once we, once we paint it. And let me see if I can kind of turn this around for you guys. So I think, you know, these little nodules make it look, you know, a little bit more realistic. And I noticed that the spider's leg starts skinny and then it gets fat. And then the next portion, um, you know, always starts skinny and then it gets fat on and on, you know, fat to skinny. And so we're not going to put these legs on just yet because I gotta finish them up. I gotta finish them up and I wanna get to testing this thing. So before I painted them, I'll be, I'll be right back, I'll be right back. So you can see the smallest set of legs right here. These are tiny. You can see I painted the little tips of them and these are pretty much gonna go like back here. They look like blue Smurf legs. Yeah, totally blue pool noodle Smurf legs. So I'm gonna put these aside. I'll finish painting them and you guys will see what they look like in the end. But let's get this a spider set up, right? Let's get this thing set up and tested. So I think it'll be fine just kind of sitting on the plywood and all of that. I, th I think it'll be fine kind of like this. So what we're gonna do is test the motion sensor by itself. I've unhooked the servo, uh, then I'll hook up the servo 
and we'll test it like for reals real and see what the range is you know maybe we need to adjust the range i don't know we'll see so let's see make sure i got everything i need i'm going to teleport you guys into the testing arena now i'm going to go set up the spider and then the problem is you guys are not going to get much audio because the, the microphone is in here right so i may turn it around or better yet i can move it with me into the next room so that is going to take you know a, a tiny bit of time but let me uh, get this guy there first and then i'll move the microphone out there so you can at least hear me talking right so there we go let's let's do this thing there we go there we go i think i got everything i think we got everything hooked up and i'll bring my computer to power it for us. You guys can see him, I think. Yep. So he's aimed at the door, so all the silly string mess will be, you know, on the door. So what I'm going to do now is unhook this and unhook this. And I'm going to take the microphone in there. So I'm going to mute it because it's going to make all kinds of clangy noises. I'm going to have to unhook it, which is going to pop. So it'll be total silence here for a bit. So I want to put you guys on a intermission. So at least you guys can listen to some tunes. And I will be back. Uh, Todd is saying those legs are going to look cool. Uh, and uh, Jim Frozen is saying this spider's built better than my Porsche 944. <laughs> well, we're almost done. We're almost done. Ooh, Dave Beck, 25 or 64. That's a killer Chicago song. That's a good cover. That's a good cover. All right. So... I'm going to go ahead and, and unhook all this. So it's going to get real quiet. I'm going to put you guys on your intermission so you can chat amongst yourselves. And I'll be right back. This will be, you know, maybe maybe like two minutes, you know, for me to move all this stuff. I will be back. <laughs>
All right, so this is a little bit weird because I'm using my phone, you know, to see any type of chat, but it's on the delay. So I'm watching this. Oh, I just got here. I just got here. So it's just like a couple second delay. Uh, so hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better. It's a little boomy, you know, with, with the mic. But before I round up some victims, uh, let's see what the sensor is doing here and how it's working. I need to get my computer. Hold on. just making sure everything's kind of like, uh, you know, hooked up pretty good. Nothing fell out. All right, because I'm just kind of laying it on the mess of wires for now. All right. Let me get out of the way. Jim Frozen is saying, your dogs are as big as mine. They take up the whole bed. Yeah, yeah, they do. Hey, Emma Kiss. All right, so it looks like it's on, but the sensor is asleep. So let me make sure that the sensor is still plugged in and that none of the wires got, you know, jangled. And then here, reset it got all the, the spaghetti going on why our sensor took a nap so here, let me separate the servo wire so we get them ready to go. Here, here, and here. Servo. All right. Let's upload the code one more time. I'm gonna turn up this light, see if maybe, well, it should be able to detect in the dark.
Nobody heard the nails dancing. I know, they always leave. Somebody says, um, Jim Frozen said, note that they all left. Oh, they know, they know what I got. They're like, oh, we ain't being her guinea pigs. Uh-uh. Oh, did our LED light fall off? That may have happened. May have happened. Yes. Poor LED is on the wrong thing. There we go. Let's see if that works better. Oh, and he's backwards. He's backwards. Shooting peeps as to why this is not lighting up the LED. Our LED is indeed in 13. Oh, but the LED is getting 5 volts because I'm sending 5 volts out from the Arduino to the breadboard, and 5 volts may not be enough to to power it quite well. So I say we hook up our can, our canister, and see what gives. So here we go. I'm gonna stand out of the way. Let's see here. Let me grab the signal wire. Connect that. And connect the power and ground. Where you be at? We got power and we have ground. Power and ground. All right. A little bit of spaghetti here, but I'll find it. It's getting caught on the servo wire. There we go. Holy, this thing shoots really far. It's like it threw up but at least it's got some really nice range and this is about as far as I'm going to put it for the kids you know for the door outside it's gonna live like on this corner right here so unfortunately no one got slimed I think that they are much smarter than I am because you know I slimed myself in the face and so me zero dogs one you know and now the cat is like hmm so the can lasts about that long. It's pretty much running on empty. And so the servo wire kind of crosses the nozzle a little bit, just the way we have it hooked up. 
So once it's hooked up for real, it'll, you know, we'll move all that. But guys, I think it passed the test. It passed the test. And I'm not going to, uh, you know, move the mic or, or anything like that. So let me um, just filter this. There we go. It was all going out of order. So Dave Wall says it works. Cool. Jim saying good job. Bill Bill had a good laugh. You know, Ripley was the the you know she was pretty brave. She went all the way up to the door. Eeyore went and then kind of stopped. It was like wait a minute, something super fishy up in here. Um, and then Joe has a good idea. Do you have a start stop button program? No, uh, because if some something were to happen, you would have to go running. You know, unless you have it plugged in the house where you can quickly unplug the whole thing. But like just a, a quick kill switch basically would be a good idea. So that's a good add on. And guys, even if you think of things like after the fact, that's great. Get on Discord, post it up because we'll make like a running list of our version 2.0, version 3.0, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, J2681 was saying that was fast. Man, it started working like the warm up period because it was already working in there. There was like no warm up period, but it's usually about a minute or two. Uh, Jim Frozen is saying, good boy, we know. Uh, too much ambient light. Yeah, so I can see how like the piano is very well lit. And then he, you know what? He's kind of the color of this floor a little bit. He, he blends to fool the, you know, all the prey. So no one will see it. Um, and uh, Bill Fraser is saying, is it plugged into the computer? Yes, for now I have it plugged into the computer, but it does have a barrel jack. So what I'm gonna do is run it out of a barrel jack probably through an extension cord inside the house, you know, kind of use gels, like be able to pull it out in case something happens uh, real quick. Uh, and pin seven and nine, yes. No wires, no touchy. Yeah, the, I think it's more of a voltage problem because these LEDs, unlike a lot of the Arduino made for Arduino type LEDs, require more voltage and I'm not pumping enough volts, uh, voltage to it. And stage fright, in the beginning, yes, um, J2681, he was like, does it have stage fright? All my projects have stage fright. It is like the worst, like we test it and it works. Like, you know, last week we're like, yeah! And then the grand finale, it's like, mm, no, no, you know? But you can see how the, uh, let me see if I can roll this into view and I'm on a delay. So I think, I think this is kind of good. And the idea is that these hook into two PVC little thingies back here. And I can put like a cotter pin or something to hold them in place. And I'm gonna have to like, you know, balance this. Ooh, they're not moving it right now. Let's see where it ends up, one moment. All right, that's a pretty good view. Well, that's a pretty good view. And so the spider butt will then, I'm gonna make a little platform for it. And he's gonna go like that. And once he's painted up, with like red stripes, that's a pretty good situation. I'm gonna roll him around like, you know, the pageant. And so that's a, that's a nice size. That's a big old badonk donk right there. He's our Kim Kardashian spider. So now that he's stuffed, he's got a little crinkly tail. You know, I'm sure, oh, someone's already interested in the crinkly tail, thinks it's a dog toy, but I don't know. I don't know. I might, I might nap with him. I know one of you guys wants him, but I think, I think I'll nap with him. And uh, I'm just like going back in time on your, your comments um, uh, with the dogs. But yes, project got momentarily, momentary stage fright and now it's good. And uh, Jim Frozen is saying, can you play us a little music before you go? I cut my violins upstairs though. But now that I know that you guys want some of that, we'll start incorporating that into some future streams. Uh, Dave Beck says, ooh, good idea. Maybe a switch near the rear for the sensor wire, sensor signal wire. Yeah. Uh, and Jim Frozen is saying, stage fright is how we got to the moon. Ain't that the truth? And we got to the moon with less technology than is what is in my phone right now. How insane is that, guys? That's just like crazy. And Jim Frozen, me and him are about to duke it out. We're about to duke it out over this pillow. I'm like, oh, it's my pillow. Jim's like, no, it's my pillow. My, my. It's 
gonna go back and forth and will tug of war this pillow. But guys, the seams turned out really nice for a hand sewn, you know, job. Here we'll put our little uh, Velcro there, but we got our seam going down the middle. He's got a little bit of a little fat situation going on there. But uh, other than this middle seam here, the seams are tough to see. And I think he'll look good with two red stripes going down his back. That's gonna look awesome. That's why I think I'm gonna keep him all year round in the shop and then we can like rig him for different things. Like once we get to every hundred chat message, it goes off or something like that. We'll, we'll figure something out. Or maybe I gotta play a quick lick, like a, a, you know, a quick, not a whole song, but like maybe just like, a, you know, a portion, like a verse or a chorus or something like that. So I think we can do something. <laughs> the hairy bean bag, Jim Frozen says, thank you. Well guys, I thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. It was like a blast. We know all the components work and we put them, you know, we kind of mocked everything up. So now it's upon me to put in like all the final touches with the paint, the legs, getting the, the sensor, I think I like where it is. It's doing pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit of hair to hide it, you know, a little bit better. The LED eyes, I think are gonna look killer. I'm gonna add more LED so it, it you know, glows a lot more. And this is gonna be good. This is gonna be a successful Halloween. So I can't wait to put some video together for you guys and some more photos so you see how this ends up, you know, once it's all complete. So thanks so much for, for joining me and watching and chatting and kind of like, let's just get through this together, you know, fix all the problems. And special thanks to Wrench Army members for supporting the stream, these projects. And we have our very own projects for Wrench Army members, code, plans, all fun stuff. So if you wanna check it out, check it out. If you don't, still. I love having you guys. So thank you so much. I'm gonna continue reading your comments. And if you haven't, jump on Discord. Yes, that's where we like keep talking after the stream and we keep talking tomorrow and the next day and the next day until the next stream and post up your ideas for this project. So have a great night, guys. I will see you and happy Halloween. <laughs>